When was the last time you read something on the internet, saw something on television, or encountered something at your job that piqued your curiosity? Something that made you question the logic in a news article you read? Or wonder how technology like a laptop is so powerful, yet so small? Now, let's take this one step further. When was the last time you took that curiosity and developed it into a deeper thinking? When was the last time you wondered not just how a laptop works on the surface, but you delved into the mechanics of the computer code responsible for the operating system, or the structure and function of the motherboard? This deep thinking is what I call natural curiosity. It starts when you find yourself interested in something you encounter, and it continues into the development of a desire to dig deeper, to form a foundation and an understanding that extends beyond just the surface. This deep thinking, this natural curiosity, can lead us to great things. It can lead us to develop an emotional connection, a passion with things that we're curious about, and it can lead us to take that passion and transform it into something potentially innovative and profound. There are aspects in all of our lives, whether at work, in developing revolutionary technology like the next iPhone, at home or otherwise, where we can challenge ourselves to think more deeply in a way that is positive and satisfying, in a way that will encourage us to dig deeper and to explore our natural curiosity and develop a passion rooted in that natural curiosity. For all of you out in the audience today, has there ever been a time in your lives where you were curious about something, you displayed an outward inquisitiveness, but you were discouraged from pursuing that curiosity, either by someone at work, a boss or a colleague, a teacher at school, or by maybe someone else in your life? While you think about that, let me share with you an experience from my own life. When I was in the fourth grade, I taught myself about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. As I was getting ready to go to school the next morning, I couldn't help but wonder what inspired Pythagoras to come up with such an innovative theorem that related the sides of a right triangle. And what sorts of applications did the Pythagorean theorem have beyond the classroom? When I got to school the next day, however, I couldn't help but be astounded by the fact that my teachers and my classmates didn't share the same enthusiasm about the Pythagorean theorem that I did. <laughs> Even though I longed to learn more about it, I was told to ask fewer questions. In other words, to turn off my natural curiosity. The takeaway from this experience, however, was not that my educational environment attempted to discourage me from nourishing my natural curiosity. Instead, the takeaway was that I did not let this experience discourage me from going on to develop my natural curiosity, a natural curiosity that I still harbor today standing in front of you. We will all encounter experiences in our lives where our natural curiosity will be challenged. It might be discouraged. But the important thing to remember is that the power to engage and nourish our natural curiosities lies in our own hands. Now let me share with you a different example, one that shows how much of a positive impact a nourishing environment can have on developing natural curiosity. This past summer, I had the privilege of organizing and managing Caltech InnoWorks, a four-student, by-student, free summer camp in science and engineering for 60 underserved middle school students in the Pasadena, California area. The students in the program came from a traditional educational background. They had been trained to succeed in the classroom, on homework assignments, on exams, on quizzes. They had been trained to ask the what. What pages in the textbook do I need to study for tomorrow's quiz? And the how, how many questions are on that quiz? 
But very few of those students had been trained to ask the why. Why is the material we're learning in the classroom important? In contrast, InnerWorks encouraged a hands-on learning environment. The students were divided into groups of three or four and assigned an undergraduate mentor who inspired them to ask and answer questions in an environment where they did not feel pressured, they did not feel embarrassment from being curious. It was amazing to me how much of a difference even a one-week summer camp could make on the students' confidence. They came out of the camp wanting to ask the deeper questions, and it helped them form an eventual interest in science and engineering. Let me give you a specific example from the camp. Towards the end, we asked the students to do an experiment where they extracted DNA from a strawberry. Sure, they still asked the how and the what questions, but they also asked the why. Why are the chemicals we're using in this experiment able to extract DNA? And why is the extraction of DNA important in our bodies and beyond the classroom in biology? As I thought more about my experiences with InnerWorks and in the fourth grade, I couldn't help but wonder whether there was a scientific basis for curiosity and whether there was a known relationship between the brain and curiosity. For example, for all of you here today, have you ever noticed how much easier it is to learn about something if you're curious about it? As it turns out, this observation isn't just in your head. It has a basis in science. In October 2014, in the scientific journal Neuron, a group of researchers published a study detailing the relationship between curiosity and the hippocampus, a part of your brain involved in long-term memory storage. The researchers in the study were able to quantify curiosity by asking the participants in the study to go through a series of trivia questions and assign a numerical value depending on whether or not they knew the answer to those questions, and if not, how interested and how curious they were to learn the answer to those questions. After they gathered that data, they used a functional MRI machine, something that allowed them to track brain activity through monitoring blood flow and blood oxygenation levels in the brain. And they tracked that brain activity while the participants in the study learned the answer to those trivia questions that they were either more curious about or less curious about. And what the researchers found was fascinating. As it turns out, Activity in the hippocampus increases as you learn something that you're curious about. So what does that mean in a, in a broader context? That means that as brain activity increases, it's easier for us to store long-term memories, and that's why it's so much easier for you to remember things that you learn that you're curious about. This had a second interesting significance. When you learn something you're curious about, the part of your hippocampus that becomes more active doesn't automatically stop being active once you stop learning those things that you're curious about. It continues a little bit afterwards. So if you do some mundane activities, if you learn about something that you're not quite as interested in, right after you learn about something that you are curious about, you still retain that nearly as well as you do the material that you learn that you're curious about. So, you might be wondering, how do I nurture my own natural curiosity? You might be familiar with the term IQ, intelligence quotient, and EQ, emotional quotient, but less common is the term CQ, or curiosity quotient. This was a term coined by author and journalist Thomas Friedman to describe our ability to develop a curiosity about things that we're curious, things that we're interested in regardless of our age, our educational background, or our perceived and measured intelligence. To nurture our curiosities, there are three main ideas to keep in mind. First, to challenge ourselves to develop a confidence, to develop a confidence to ask those questions when we encounter something new in our everyday lives. The second idea is to take that confidence and encourage ourselves to think more deeply and to develop 
new ideas. And the third idea is to take that deep exploration and turn it into a foundation for a passion. Passion feeds into natural curiosity and vice versa. And by developing a passion rooted in natural curiosity, we're able to provide ourselves with further encouragement to nurture our natural curiosities, and we're also able to find profound enjoyment in the discovery process. These three main ideas don't just apply to your own development of natural curiosity. You can also use them to help those around you nurture their natural curiosities. If you're a parent or an educator, you can give your children or your students the tools to develop a confidence to ask those deeper questions. You can provide them with an environment where they feel comfortable to pursue things that they're curious about. And even if you don't know the answer to a question they ask you, you can refer them to external resources. Nowadays, there are huge databases of information online, whether that be through online encyclopedias, peer-reviewed journals, massive open online courses, like MOOCs for short, like Coursera, edX, Khan Academy. You can refer them to YouTube. And all of these links are just a click away. Albert Einstein was once quoted saying, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. We can all learn something from Albert Einstein's example. He didn't start off as a phenomenal physicist. In fact, when he developed his interest in physics, he was working as a patent clerk. But in his spare time, he took that interest in physics and he developed it into a deeper curiosity, a deep curiosity that eventually became a passion. And as we all know, the rest is history. I challenge you to follow in Albert Einstein's footsteps. Develop your natural curiosity by asking those deeper, broader questions and use that natural curiosity to find that niche that you are passionate about. Successful individuals throughout history, like Einstein, have of course devoted a tremendous amount of hard work and time to their discoveries. However, their success is also rooted in their ability to take that passion, a passion rooted in natural curiosity, and transform it into something new and profound, something that brought them to the cutting edge of innovation and discovery. Curiosity didn't kill the cat, it simply awakened it. Thank you very much.